kart racers are those cartoony racing games, you know, like Mario Kart, and they're not exactly known for making sense. Like, why is Bowser battling Mario in a kart race? Why not simply crush his head in his powerful jaws? But occasionally, a game in this frequently wacky genre will cross an invisible line and become frankly too bizarre with a premise, setting, or official license that is too bonkers to be believed. The kind of game that makes you say, I'm sorry, what? Am I looking at something real right now? Or did I forget to open a window before I started revarnishing the kitchen table? These are the weirdest kart races we honestly may have imagined. Please let us know if you're seeing them too. Living World Racing is a PlayStation 2 kart racer. Now hold on to your brains because the next things you hear are going to make less and less sense. In this cutesy kart em up you play as one of several small household pets, including mice, rabbits and hamsters. Each pet is driving a boat, and each boat is floating on a cloud. In this kart racer brought to you by Living World, a real world supplier of cages, supplements, toys and hay for birds and other small pets. I tried to warn you. In what is 100% the weirdest licensed video game on a home console perhaps ever, your task is to beat the other pets in a no-holds-barred contest of racing prowess. <laughs> Having chosen a pet, you'll compete to race your cloud boat through a series of cute and colourful circuits that will test your reflexes and ability to not get stuck on a carnival stall advertising living world corn cobs. For a cutesy game clearly devised to sell Living World products such as Living World Drops and uh, Living World Extrusion, this chaotic kart racer has a surprisingly sophisticated weapon system. Rather than holding one power up at once, like in Mario Kart, you can harvest weapons as you go, switching through categories with a tap of the shoulder button so you're always able to deploy a tactical pumpkin bomb, protective shield or rain down hell with a carrot missile. Does Living World sell those? Also, I'll say this for Living World Racing, I've played a lot of kart races in my time, but this is the only one to feature a slideshow of advice to follow when buying a rabbit. Put this in Mario Kart 9, Nintendo! You cowards! You might think it a wild move to create an entire kart racer built around increasing brand awareness of your pet supplies line, especially when the game is clearly aimed at young kids who don't have much money to spend on cages and extrusion. But you know what? Those kids are gonna grow up. They're gonna have kids of their own. And those kids are going to own rabbits. And where will they turn when the rabbit needs hay? Exactly. Pay dirt. Sorry. Hey! Look, a nut! Approaching sound barrier! Eminem's Kart Racing is absolutely a game you feel you might have imagined or misremembered, but fortunately, there's written proof that it actually exists. In the Guinness Book of Records, where it holds the coveted record for worst kart racing game ever, with an average ranking of 22.5%, making it even worse than Shrek Swamp Kart Speedway for the Game Boy Advance. Thank god we didn't hear about that one before we started writing this video. Ugh. Even having seen the proof in print, we're still not sure the images you're seeing now are real. After all, who on earth thought it would be fun to race go-karts as M&Ms, taking control of such memorable and distinct characters as a yellow M&M, a red M&M, a green M&M, a blue M&M, an orange M&M, a yellow M&M... Oh wait, we said that one already. Also, if the M&M Kart Racer, released in 2008 for the Wii and Nintendo DS, was really real, surely it would feature confection-themed weapons to fire at your rivals. Like a, a, a peanut cannon. There you go, literally took like four seconds. The game couldn't possibly be completely devoid of power-ups, right? Otherwise it would just be a very boring and slow drive around largely featureless courses. Oops, sorry. Approaching sound barrier! The game feels very clunky to drive, though does attempt to insert a sense of pace through yelling approaching sound barrier every, oh, five to ten seconds or so? Approaching sound barrier! 
approaching sound barrier! I need a better engine. Approaching sound barrier! Which is a bit much, seeing as the speed of sound is 767 miles per hour, and the M&M carts feel like they're doing maybe 15? Which, hey, I guess is technically approaching the sound barrier. Just a very long way off. Oh, you are you? Well, no. If you asked me if I wanted to play a Star Wars game where I can play as Darth Maul, Yoda and Obi-Wan, I'd say hell yes. Then there'd be a pause and I'd say, unless it's a kart racer where everyone has bobbleheads. And then you'd pull off your mask to reveal your George Lucas and that's exactly what it is. And then you'd charge me $39 for it. Star Wars Super Bombad Racing is a 2001 PS2 kart racer that features oddly proportioned versions of Star Wars characters racing in famous Star Wars vehicles. Sebulba is in his pod racer, Anakin is in the Naboo N1 fighter, Boss Nass is on, uh, whatever it is Boss Nass drives. We're gonna say the Nass car. <laughs> Having picked a bobblehead character, you get to hover race through sort of recognisable Star Wars locations using definitely not recognisable power-ups. Maybe this gelatinous cube is from the expanded universe? Super Bombad Racing was supposed to be released on the Dreamcast and PC, but those ports were cancelled. Right! Presumably due to lack of interest, perhaps because LucasArts gave this game the weirdest name of any Star Wars game ever. For those wondering, Bombad is Gungan for superb, in what we can only describe as a gross overestimation of how familiar the general public were going to be with the language of the Gungan people. In the very unlikely event that you need this game to be any weirder, you can make things even more bizarre with cheat codes. There's a cheat to be Boba Fett, there's a cheat to play as a Trade Federation battle tank, there's a cheat that turns every racer into a floating treadmill with a cardu on it, whatever that is. They're native Naboo creatures used by the Gungan Grand Army. Wow, really went all in on the Gungans, didn't you, George? quite hard to explain Crazy Frog to younger viewers, but all you really need to know is that it was a very famous ringtone. Oh, oh, a ringtone? Um, uh, the thing that you watch TikTok on used to ring sometimes. So gut-bustingly hilarious was that ringtone that it spawned a worldwide hit single and, understandably, a bunch of spin-off media to make as much money off the good ringtone as possible. So obviously in 2005, Crazy Frog Racer was released for the PlayStation 2. Wait, hang on, I thought this was about Crazy Frog Racer 2. They made two! Yes, they made two, somehow. Which is why Planet Earth was graced with a sequel to perhaps the most cringeworthy kart racer ever. Although whether this game should even count as a kart racer is up for debate, seeing as the frog itself is driving nothing and instead flies along miming a motorbike with its arse hanging out in the wind. All soundtrack to Crazy Frog dance tracks that we dare not play you more than a second of for copyright reasons. And if this channel's gonna get sued, it can't be by Crazy Frog. It just can't. Infuriatingly, while Crazy Frog Racer 2 is pretty rubbish, it actually handles less like Mario Kart and more like a high-speed floaty sci-fi driving game like Wipeout, a genre we've said many times on this channel deserves to make a comeback. And so, on a technicality, we're obligated to say Crazy Frog Racer 2 is a masterpiece actually, and we officially give it two thumbs up. <laughs> F1 Race Stars is the kind of experience your subconscious might produce if you played one of the many, many Formula One racing games shortly before coming down with a particularly virulent fever. Released in 2012, this officially licensed product was developed by Codemasters and reimagines the 2012 F1 grid as bobble-headed cartoon men who ramp their precision-engineered race cars into the mouths of big robot sharks. In other words, better. 
Indeed, while it's every bit as head-scratchingly weird, F1 Race Stars is distinguished from most of the games on this list by receiving mixed or average reviews, which for a cash-in licensed kart racer is about the highest praise imaginable. It's actually pretty fun to play, and certainly suggests several ways the real Formula One could be easily improved. For instance, would it kill seven-time world champion Lewis Hamilton to occasionally pretend that his hand is a snake trying to eat him? And if 2005 and 2006 champ Fernando Alonso really wants to revive his chances of bagging another title, it's weird that he hasn't tried introducing a catchphrase where he shouts King Alonso whenever he does something good. King Alonso. Yep, adding catchphrases to the list of things that would definitely improve Formula One. F1 Race Stars is undoubtedly at its most bizarre when it tries to adopt elements from actual Formula One, like a safety car power-up that slows down the entire pack, or the way your car can be damaged, requiring you to detour via the pit lane to repair. Yet there's something oddly gratifying about seeing named drivers and F1 sponsors in a surreal world where Sebastian Vettel has to jump his car through a medieval castle, or where you can break the FIA's strict racing rules to get a vital overtake on Lewis Hamilton, and yet the sport's governing body does nothing about it, which isn't like real life at all. Isn't it? I, I don't get it. Is that an F1 thing? Yeah. I thought you said you were going to watch Drive to Survive on Netflix. Yeah, but she was on there as well, so... She was pretty good. The appeal of The Sims is obvious. Create a household of personalised characters, each with their own hopes, dreams and personalities, and then drown them all in the pool. DROWN THEM ALL! <clears throat> but there's no household and certainly no drowning in My Sims Racing, an inexplicable adaptation of EA Sims franchise into a wacky go-kart racing game. Some of The Sims' DNA has made it across into this 2009 Wii and DS racer. For instance, you can put a plumb bob, The Sims' happiness indicator, on your car. You can customise your racer and their vehicle to an impressive degree, and everyone, including the announcer, is speaking Simlish. The endearing nonsense that Sims spout in the proper Sims game increasingly frantically as you brick them up in a wall to starve to death. <laughs> what, just me? Liars. While My Sims Racing doesn't make much sense conceptually, the courses are imaginative and there's a weirdly deep story mode, where you uncover the mystery of vanished billionaire Sir Charles and try to save old Gabriel's farm from someone called the Infernal Morcubus. Also, a mummy called Mel the Mummy is there, which, I mean, cool. Can you be a mummy in The Sims? Hmm, let me check the list of Sims paid expansion packs. Well? Mm, give me a minute, I'm only up to the Sims 3 Katy Perry's Sweet Treats. The popularity of Mario Kart in the 90s spawned no end of imitation kart races, so we can't be too surprised by Garfield Kart, released in 1997 for the Nintendo 64. Oh no, sorry, I'm just reading here, 2013 for the PC, Mac, 3DS, Android and iOS. Okay, there's no excuse for that. The inexcusable release date isn't the only thing that's baffling about Garfield Kart and its 2019 remaster, Garfield Kart Furious Racing. By the way, in case you were wondering, the footage you're seeing is of the remaster. We're also confused by, for instance, how Garfield the cat is able or allowed to drive, why he's the same size as his owner John, or why they made a Garfield Kart racer when there definitely aren't enough recognisable characters in this franchise to support one. Sorry, who the hell is Harry? Yeah! Garfield Wiki says, Harry loves to eat birds, and on two occasions Garfield has had to save some bluebirds from being eaten by Harry. I take it back, Harry is my favourite character. 
The game is difficult to control and lacking charm. Indeed, the fact that we think we might have imagined it entirely is the only redeeming feature of Garfield Kart Furious Racing. Or should that be Furious Racing? There's no way of knowing because there's almost no voice acting in the game. Even Garfield, who speaks frequently in other Garfield media, and whose trademark sass is surely 90% of the character's appeal, can only hoot unnervingly, like the sounds coming from Harry's mouth when he's chowing down on his favourite snack. That's right, birds. The wonky controls even rob you of the only good thing about kart racing in the Garfield universe. That is to say, the promise of being able to ram your kart hard into Garfield's owner, John. Come on, Garfield game, let us kill John! You're leaving money on the table here, Jim Davis. Yeah, do you remember the uh, H&M add-on pack for Sims 2? Yeah. Uh, yeah, that one. Yeah. Classic. Yeah, they did an Ikea one as well. Yeah. Good stuff, Terrible. good stuff. Imagine driving in an Ikea bed. That's, that's what we need, an Ikea cut. <laughs> Don't say that out loud, you'll make it happen. Yes. Outro the video quick before I oh, to make that. Oh, sorry. Um, thank you for watching. Can you think of any other really weird kart races that might have been hallucinations? But honestly, they, they are real. Uh, let us know in the comments below if you enjoyed. You do give us a thumbs up, subscribe. Uh, we've got a Patreon you can support. And if you want to watch way more stuff that we've made, some videos over here that YouTube thinks that you will like. Don't make a kart racer, I can't. <laughs>